Steph, I need you before the bell, okay? I'm going to get your homework out, rubbing your notes out. Turn off the music. Okay, go ahead and fill in the spinner. All the phones should be away and upside down. We'll get started right away. I was able to get them about 16 and 17 minutes for their homework. Um, Make sure you guys are getting on time. I, if you're tardy, I send a message home to parents, and then it will end in a referral if they keep their busy behavior continuing. That's really the rest. So there's a couple of you. There's like two of you I'm talking to right now. You're tardy a lot. One of you already corrected your ways. Thank you so much. Um, sent us a good door and a game lock, and we'll be here on time, okay, before the bell. Um, I hope I get started right away. We want to get this done. So today we're going to move on over into probability and the multiplication rule. So we'll be multiplying fractions together. We're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about independent events, and that's when they do not affect each other. So right now, if I rolled um, a dice and picked a mint, they have nothing to do with each other. So those would be independent. Whatever happens when I roll the dice does not affect what mint I get in the jar that's up here on my desk. So it's when things do not um, affect each other. It can also be a case where I pull a marble out of a bag and I put the marble back in. If I put the marble back in, then whenever I got the first time, doesn't affect because all of the marbles are there for the second pick. So that's kind of the idea we're going to today, independent and dependent. Same marble problem, I put a marble in, I pick one and I don't take it and put it back in, then I have less marbles in my jar and that's gonna affect, that's called dependent. So today is independent and dependent. Um, the notes were rather dark with the spinner, so um, draw in the spinner so we can get started. And then we can't have an even number on a uh, coin, so let's change this word to die. So <laughs> there's a little typo there. So get those two typos situated, and then I'll tell you what to do tomorrow. Tomorrow is our quiz. Yay, it comes so, so quick. And I got the quizzes ready, so I can actually tell you everything that's on there. That was my homework over the weekend. The first thing is there'll be nine questions on your quiz. I've highlighted, we all know that homework is due on a quiz day. So make sure you bring in your one, two, three, four homeworks. I have all the homeworks and the keys up in the front. Like I said, I'll probably get you about 15 minutes to work on tonight's assignment and anything from the past and I'm after school. You will notice there's no review sheet for this quiz. This quiz will be a group quiz. You're working with who you're sitting with. If you're not sitting with, more than you know, one other person, I'll move you around a little bit, but other than that, it's a group quiz, so you can check your answers with your friends. And then one thing that maybe you forgot about was on last Tuesdays, um, your Albert I.O. was assigned, assignment number 13, and notice the due date is tonight. So you have till 11 tonight, the Albert I.O., I'm only getting about 50% participation on that, so when we come down and you have a 78 in the end and a 68 in the end, it might be the determining factor that really gets you up that letter grade. So those are four points, and they're also your, your prep for your SAT. Steph, turn your phone upside down. It's recorded now. It's the second time we've talked about phones, so go ahead and flip it upside down. Um, and so that is your SAT prep to get you ready for SAT. My class covers the material, but those questions bring it a little deeper, and that's what we need to get that bright future. So make sure you're doing that. The other thing is you see tomorrow after the quiz, all we have is copy the notes. So if you want to go ahead and copy them, they are up. I even put them in color because of some of the spinners and the colors. So if you have color ink, you can do that. If not, you can always cut out of your book. Any of the pictures come from your book. And then you can either hand copy or print those notes. And then there's an Albert I.O. number 14 that is already set up. It is not due until the following Monday. But those people that, I don't know, for me, I always like to see what day can I go out with my husband for dinner or get the, you know, have an evening to myself. Um, so what if I was looking ahead, I'd be like, oh, I could get all my math homework done tonight and have Tuesday off, right? So if you print your notes tonight and you go ahead and do your Albert I.O. 13 and 14 and have those four homeworks done, you could really take Tuesday night and take a nap or whatever if you've got to catch up on something. My theater people probably need a nap. So. Any questions for me about expectations? Quiz tomorrow, it's a group quiz, okay? And um, here we go. No more questions? Okay, good. Let's jump right on in. Okay, um, when we go ahead and look at this spinner that is really dark, so we've recreated it. Suppose we have a coin and it's tossed. Let me get a coin. That all I got. Uh, we got a coin and it's tossed in a spinner that is spun. So for this, we have two events, but they're separate. I'm not spinning a spinner and saying what's the probability of green or red. That would be one spin. Or green, um, 
green and two. Uh, it's not the ones that were, uh, what were the words, union and intersection from 10-2. I'm doing two separate things. So my first event is the coin and my second is the spinner. What is the probability of getting heads on a coin? One out of two. There is one heads on the coin and two possible outcomes. Then I go over to the spinner and I'm spinning this and say, what's the probability of getting a red on my spinner? One out of three. Do you see how those are independent? When I flip the coin, does that affect the spinner? No, those are very obviously an independent event. That whatever happens here doesn't affect that. So on your quiz, there'll be a blank. I mean, um, actually the words will be there. You'll just circle it and it'll say independent or dependent. There's four of those. So there's four questions from today's lesson. Um, when we multiply those together, uh, Valeria, what do I get when I multiply those two fractions? So one half and the one third? No, multiply. Don't add. Tops with tops, bottoms with bottoms. Multiply. You keep adding. <laughs> yep. I'm not going to keep adding. Multiply. <laughs> That's okay. It is early in the morning. Good. So one six. I'm like, you multiply, multiply. And if you don't know what one six, six is as a fraction or a decimal, you're going to go ahead and take your calculator and do one divided by six. You are being recorded right now, so um, is it okay what you're saying? You want to turn them off? Okay. He is usually in China's room at the end of the hall on the left, yeah. Um, he sometimes is maybe in with Mr. Wynn because I think he helps with Algebra 1. So if he's not in with China, he might be in with Wynn, but I bet you China knows where he is, yeah. 1 divided by 6. So that would be approximately times, oops, times 100. I like people to know they're recorded because that's Angelo, so Angelo might be coming in to get somebody that's like skipping or something. I'm looking for so-and-so. Eleni, what's up? Yeah, sure, just grab the path off the wall, and that'd be 17%. Okay, let's keep moving forward. Um, Peter, what's the probability of getting an odd number on my spinner? How many odd numbers do we have? Good, and is that going to affect getting an even on a dice? No, if I go ahead and roll the die, what's the probability of an even number? What do you think, Corbin, an even number on a die? What is it? Three out of six, or he could reduce it to one half. He knows half of the numbers are even. And then we multiply the tops with the tops and the bottoms with the bottom. Mitchell, what's my top number? Multiply straight across. Yeah, and what's on bottom? Oops, I almost did it without even letting you do it. Six times the three? 18. Yeah. Now, if Mitchell doesn't, or if anybody doesn't reduce, then you're going to go ahead and have some points off. So just afterwards, make sure you reduce or check that it doesn't reduce. It'll be one third. These problems will all say to write as a fraction. It will not say reduce fraction because that's automatic. We reduce our fractions. And then it'll also say to give me the uh, percent. So you hit double arrow, you multiply by 100. And I just always round it to a full percent. But as long as you round correctly, that is how you get full credit for D's. You would circle independent, and then you would find um, the probability as a fraction and a decimal. What do you guys think so far? OK. Any questions? OK. We'll go on over into just a couple more practice with our independent events. I honestly think it's dependent that makes me have to think harder. It was very clear that these were not affecting each other. They were very different things. But then sometimes we're looking at things that maybe kind of intersect or we're picking mar marbles out of the same bag or mints out of the same container or we're picking, I don't know, cards out of a deck. Are we putting the cards back? Yes or no? That's kind of where dependent gets a little more tricky. Okay. Um, Paola, am I just not saying that? I always sound so bad. Anybody better at pronouncing names? I could totally do the names at graduation then. I could never do the names at graduation. I'm going to say Paola. I don't know. We'll call her P. Okay. She's got a nickname now. We're like best friends. So P's weather app tells her that there's a 20% chance of rain on Tuesday and a 50% chance of rain on Wednesday. Would if it rains on Tuesday be affected by whether it's going to rain on Wednesday? No, those are separate days. So we're, we're looking at two separate things. So the first thing you would do is say that's independent. If it rains on Tuesday, that does not mean that it's going to rain on Wednesday. They are separate, you know, things we're looking at here. 
What's the probability that it will rain on both days? So this is how you write it. Probability of rain and then what? Rain again. So this would be your Tuesday. This would be your Wednesday. And what is the probability of rain on Tuesday? 20%. What is the probability of rain on uh, Wednesday? 50%. So right now I'm going to show you how to take a, um, a percent and change it to a fraction. This could be on the PERT test in the first maybe five questions. You might see some changing from, you know, percents to uh, fractions, and you haven't done that for a long time. So if you just take the percent and you put it over 100, then it's very easy to go ahead and multiply these together. A lot of people in here might have known that 20% is one-fifth and 50% is one-half, so they could have used reduced fractions. Um, whichever way you want to do it, um, sometimes we just have to change those. If you go over to your calculator, you can just use the calculator, multiply this, 20 times 50 over 100 times 100. Ah, watch your fingers. What did you guys get is our new fraction when we multiply those? One tenth. So if we were talking about maybe going out, this happened to us, we go out on Rainbow River and you float in these floats for an hour and a half, well, what do you want to not happen? A thunderstorm because you're in water. So we always check the weather app and this would be um, over the two days only what a 10% chance of rain. So we would probably go ahead and float down the river. <laughs> We've had the scariest situations where we've been run, running from a thunderstorm. So those weather apps are really, really helpful um, as you're going out boating for the day or something at, you know, baseball games or whatever. They look at that probability when they cancel games and, and stuff like that. <laughs> are there any questions so far? Go ahead, Rex. I did to only 1 through 15. So if you guys want to note that now, it's only to number 15. I just thought it was getting long. I did have three kids in first period finish with the 15 minutes that was given at the end. So it shouldn't be more than 15, 20 minutes, okay? Um, you know, some people get started right away and some people, you know, move slower than others. And that's okay. Okay, let's go over to the next example. And then we'll have to get to the second page, which is the harder or the more questioning stuff. Um, so our test is a week from tomorrow. So it's coming right up along the, the way. And then um, we'll go ahead and look at this. So now we have a gaming app or some kind of gaming website. And Anna is a member of this gaming website that randomly pairs users together to solve puzzles. Um, of the 50 uh, players currently online, so there's 50 online, Anna is friends with 10 of them. So 10 of her friends are playing right now, but she can't just pick one of her friends. It's going to be random. The computer is going to stick her with somebody. I don't know about you guys, but I think most of the time my kids go on and play when their friends are playing. Do you guys do the same thing? Like, because they'll say to me, oh, so and so is playing right now. Can I play too? So they'll ask me for permission. I don't know. But this is random. So they're going to put you with somebody to get somebody to play with. Suppose um, Anna is paired with a player for a game, not liking the outcome. So it's probably not one of her friends. She disconnects and pairs with another. So now she is doing the probability of she's connected once she's connecting again what is the probability that neither player that she's paired with is a friend so she's not a friend what's her probability of getting not a friend and not a friend is what they're saying so i write it out like this it really helps me it's also called perfect probability when i go ahead and um, go in i'm going to get what i want so what is the probability that um, the first time she goes in, it's not going to be one of her friends? How many people in that group of 50 are not her friends? 40. So 10 are her friends. So kind of not the hardest math. 50 minus 10. We've got 40 people who are not friends of hers. When she went on, she disconnected. She went back in. Does that mean all 40 people are still the same choices? Yeah, as long as nobody else is paired up, she has the same 40 people that are not her friends to choose from. Now you can reduce your fractions as you go. You could reduce this to four fifths rather easily by just crossing out the zeros. Or you can go on over to the calculator. This is page 206 also. If anybody has their book, I keep writing it in the side for you so you're not note, note copiers. So we're gonna do N over D, which would be 40 times 40. And Layla, what do you get when you go ahead and reduce that? 40 times 40 over 50 times 50. 
what would that fraction be? And then we'll change it to a percent. Um, why don't we get um, Peter on the percent and we'll get Layla on the fraction. Oh, maybe that's the... I think she's almost there though. I can see her fingers going. 16 over 25, good. Do you know how to get the percent? Let's see, a double arrow, yeah, and then times 100. Nice job, both of you. So that would be 64%. And those are the two things you'll need tomorrow to get full credit on this quiz. So some of us are gonna come in today, we're gonna really get that homework 100%. Um, those are our study tools. And as I'm talking throughout the day, you might wanna know there are four from today's lesson. So you would also, uh, for this problem also, it would say independent or dependent, and you would go ahead and circle independent. Whatever she got the first time she logged in, it doesn't matter. It's the same 50 names in there when she goes in the second time. So those are independent. Each time she goes in, um, the pool is whatever it is, like however many people are, are in there. Do you guys have any questions about independent? Okay, really repetitive. Next week, we're gonna go into mutually exclusive and exclusive. And it's, it's just a new vocab, but it's very, very similar problems. Sorry, people watching the video, we have a flood in halls B and C. So they're cleaning and drying the floors as we speak. So very loud when the door opens. Um, okay, you guys ready to go to the next page? We'll go to dependent. So really, really good in the middle here is can you tell the difference? So the book did a really nice job of giving you three to six scenarios with the you try. Uh, can you just tell me if is it is it independent or dependent? Now dependent means whatever happens. So um, our two two or more events. So by the time you get to the back of the homework, you're gonna have more than two. So two or more of, of, uh, events. Oh, I can't talk. That affect the outcomes of the other. So here's a good example. Dependent. I go into my jar of myths and I say, what's the probability of getting a red? It would be uh, however many reds, so say, I don't know how many are in here, 20 out of the total 50, let's say. So I pick and I get a red. What happens when I pick again? The amount of mints is less and the amount of reds is less. Do you see that? So when we have dependent events, when I pick and I keep picking, what happens is I'm not putting them back, I'm picking them to eat them. A lot of times it's a food problem. Um, or playing cards, you don't put cards back when you pick, you get stuck with whatever you pick. So for these, these are called dependent. Whatever happens the first time is gonna go ahead and affect that second outcome. It changes the denominator a lot of times, so we should write that maybe. So there's a change in the denominator, and sometimes also, um, sometimes also in the numerator, sometimes the numerator too. So we'll see that as we, as we do a few, okay? But you see some changes. Um, you know, if we're rolling a dice and rolling a dice again, the denominator is going to say stay six. Okay, this is page um, 207. In case you didn't copy the notes, we're just going to go through, read the scenario, and say independent or dependent. I'll come to you guys. So um, one spinner is spun twice. So now I have a spinner. I spin it once. I spin it twice. What do you think, Evan, dependent or, or independent? If I have a spinner and I spin it twice. Independent. Really good. So the outcome of that first spin is in no way going to go ahead and change the outcome of the second spin. So you would go ahead and say independent, and then I would ask you, you know, I would tell you what was on the spinner, you know, what's the probability of getting, I don't know, a red or an odd number or something like that. So be more specific, but for this one, it's just independent. When I spin once, all the same things are on my spinner. My spinner doesn't change. And whatever I got the first time does not affect the second outcome. So that's called independent. In a raffle, one ticket is drawn for first place prize, and then another ticket is drawn for second place prize. So it says, and then another. You have to be really careful as you're reading. Um, independent or dependent? Uh, what do you think, Richie? Independent or dependent? If I draw one raffle ticket for first place and then another for second, it's what? Uh, no, is it going to be dependent, right? What's going to happen when I go ahead and draw the first name? That person's no longer in the raffle. So when I go ahead and I go to a raffle and I pick a first place winner, and then another person, another, a different person, the amount of people changes. So when I pick that first ticket, maybe, I don't know, um, 
I don't know, Alex M is winning the first one. We'll have both Alexes be lucky today. And then I'm not going to put Alex M's name back in there because she just won the first place prize. And then Alex C, you know, is going to win the second place prize because he'll be the second name I pick. So her name is no longer in there because she was picked on the first one. So it changes the amount of people in the drawing. So that's called dependent. So it says after the first place prize ticket is drawn, the ticket is removed and cannot be chosen again. This affects the probability of the second place um, prize winning ticket. Your odds actually just get better if you were not the winner in the first one because the sample space is reduced by one ticket. Therefore, these two events are dependent. Okay, and then the last one we'll talk about, and then um, I'll have you guys do a U-Try. If you're already there, try the U-Try. A random number generated generator generates two numbers. I try to say that all day. So what do you think, Ethan? A random number generator generates two numbers. So it's going to randomly generate a number and then randomly generate a number again. Independent or dependent? Independent. Good. It doesn't say that once we get one of the numbers, it's not put back in. Independent. There we go. Independent. So the first, um, the number for the first generation, uh, generation, and meaning generated number, has no bearing on the number of the second generation. Therefore, these two events are independent. So let's try the U-Try. You can just go ahead and mark them. I'll start to read the first one, and you decide if it's independent or dependent. And then we'll move on to um, another probability problem and just look at some pizza. I'll get hungry. Okay, questions for me. Go ahead and try those. I think we look, yeah, I did. And some of them are easier to see than other ones, and I'll go ahead and read. Of the $100 that Ray has to spend, she wants to spend 59 on a blouse and 44 on jeans. What do you guys think? Do you think this is going to be independent or dependent? Dependent, what do you guys think? Let's raise your amount on that one. It is dependent because whatever she spends on the blouse, what does that do? It gives her less money for the jeans. So if she's doing 59 for the blouse, then that only leaves her, you know, the leftover. Oh, it's even dependent because she doesn't have enough money for the jeans. So that's cheating. Oh, wow, yeah. She's got to buy one or the other. She can't get both. She needs to get a job. Okay, Ray asks each of the three stores store associates which handbag they prefer. So she goes over to Caroline and says, what do you like for these handbags? Which one would you pick? And then she goes over to Levi and says, which one would you pick? And she goes over to Valeria and says, which one would you pick? Independent or dependent? Independent, yeah, they're gonna have independent ideas. If they were all in the same room, maybe it'd be biased. Maybe they'd all, you know, go ahead and, and um, say the same thing because sometimes people don't wanna have an opinion. They're a little quiet on that at times. Um, so, but we're not talking about bias or anything. We just ask them individually. Um, all of their ideas are going to be different. And then how about Ray purchasing a handbag and a belt? Are those going to be independent or dependent? Dependent? Independent? It's going to be independent. There's no money associated with this. She's just purchasing a handbag and then just purchasing a belt. So one doesn't affect the other. Um, the money one definitely was dependent. Um, but I didn't even really like any of those scenarios. And I don't even know how you'd make it in. I'd, I'd make it into a probability um, problem. So those are just kind of to see if you understand those differences. Okay, we'll go on to, into example three. We've got one more here, one more in the back. And then like Rex uh, said, I am shortening the homework to one through 15. Um, when you come in for your quiz tomorrow, this will be on the overhead, so you don't have to know a deck of cards. Somebody, there's a question about aces or something like that in there, so you can always look up here if you don't know a deck of cards. And the other thing I'll put up is from Friday. You do want to look over all three homeworks, not just focus on tonight's. Um, tonight's is a little less than half of your um, of what you're being quizzed on, but um, we do have permutations and combinations. That's two questions. So if you want to put a little note on your blue sheet, um, you could always have your blue sheet out and say that two questions come from, oops, two questions come from Friday, four questions come from today, one question came from, what was that, Wednesday, so that's that, so there must be two from here, yeah, that totals up to nine, <laughs> to make sure my adding skills were working. 
So it's actually very light on yesterday. I don't know why when I made the quiz, but it was just a lot of really good independent and dependent ones. Maybe I like them better. I don't know. So it would be uh, one question from Wednesday, two from Thursday, two from Friday, and then four from today. And we'll finish up today and see if there's any questions on after school, too. Yeah. It's going to give you a scenario. It's going to say, tell me whether it's independent or dependent, and you'll circle it. So both words will be there. And then afterwards, you'll find the probability. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be just situational. So we would actually have more information like this pizza problem. So it's very much like the pizza problem that we're about to go into. And then very much like the homework. In the homework, I did um, go ahead and the ones that said to just classify as dependent, independent, if I could, I found the probability just for extra practice. So I would do the whole thing for extra practice because that's where they're mixed up and they're going to be mixed up tomorrow. So, And that's where we'll be talking. Like if I was working with Lauren, I'd be like, okay, let's read through this. What do you think it is, independent, dependent? It's a really good opportunity for a group quiz, right? Because we're going to doubt ourselves at times. Okay, so we got some food. We got pizza. Jose and Tessa are eating um, are eating. Wait, wait. The pizza that Jose and Tessa are eating have 10 slices. That's their total amount. Half is cheese, so that means five are cheese, and half are mushroom. I actually love sautéed mushrooms. I don't like canned mushrooms, but um, I love sautéed mushrooms with a little bit of butter and garlic. Mm, so good. But anyways, um, Tessa spins the pizza around. Whoosh, there's your um, spinner, I guess. And she spins the pizza and randomly selects a slice of mushroom pizza. If Jose spins the pizza and selects a slice after that, what is the probability, and this is how I write it, that both select mushroom? So the first selection would be mushroom, and the second would be mushroom. This is Tessa's spin, and this is Jose's spin. So it's how I write that makes sense. So probability of mushroom, and then mushroom again. Whenever I teach per probability, it's always perfect. Tessa's gonna get what she wants. We're trying to figure out the probability of her getting mushroom. So we are assuming she's getting mushroom. How many slices are mushroom? Five out of how many total slices are in the pizza? 10. So she has a half or 50% probability of getting pizza, getting pizza, getting mushroom pizza when she spins it. I leave it as five over 10. If you wanna reduce it, it'll be the same but I think this helps with the teaching possibility. Now Jose spins it. Is Tessa's pizza piece of pizza still in there? No, she took it out to eat it. So she's not gonna put it back. It's missing a piece of pizza. So now when we spin, what is the probability that Jose will get mushroom? Yeah, four out of how many? Not 10, nine, yeah. I always doubt myself with these. So Tessa got a piece of pizza. So there's one left, there's only nine slices. But she also got exactly what she wants, perfect probability. So because she got mushroom, there's only four mushroom pieces left. And so I love having this as a group quiz and being able to talk it out. You multiply numerators with numerators and denominators with denominators. And that is also why I leave it as 5 over 10. So I can see this is getting smaller. Notice the numerator and denominator both got smaller because we had less pizza. Um, if we reduce it, it'll be two nines. And did anybody already get the probability? What's the uh, probability? Did anybody take that two nines and change it over? Go ahead, Valeria. What were you going to say? No, you, okay. Who got, who got it? Ryan? 22%. Yeah. And I'll show that. We have a quiz tomorrow. I don't want you guys to go to that quiz and feel, you know, um, uncomfortable or not ready. I would put in my calculator to reduce. I'd hit double arrow and times 100. Tomorrow is a group quiz, not so that I can lean over to Mitchell and copy his answers. That is not the idea of a group quiz. That's great, gets you through the quiz, but what's a week away? After the quiz is our test on the following Tuesday. So it's so that Mitchell and I can have conversations and get stronger by each other's ideas. So use, really, really use it as a, an opportunity to collaborate. Sometimes a student could say something exactly the same way I say it, and then you can see the kid gets it from the other peer rather than get it from me. And that's why we do the collaboration and why you guys are in groups. So, um, so please, 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 this probability section was a very easy to copy homework, and I know that. So sometimes parents are like, well, they were doing all the homework, and they're still getting a, a D on their quiz, and I kind of want to be like, see if they're really um, understanding it. Ask them, you know. 
how are you getting the one half? And if they can't explain it, then they're probably just copying. So, um, so just make sure. And it's you know we're going into the end. We're all burnt out. You know I, I am too. So, um, so it's going to be you know when we get to push and shove, some people, you know, are, are not making the best choices. A lot of you are doing really really well, but I just want an opportunity to get that other you know third of the class to agree. Um, so just use it to collaborate. Nobody in this class is ever going to say, oh, stupid, what, you don't understand this. If they do, I'll knock them into space, okay? So just, you, I got your back. Nobody's going to make you feel dumb when you're learning math, okay? Um, I make mistakes. I've gone to Mr. Wynn over two problems in, in the probability. It was number 14 in the homework tonight. I just couldn't get my head past my head. And I just kept thinking, three out of six, three out of six, and I just couldn't get past it. And so I, I ended up sending, say, can you work this out? And as soon as he worked, he worked it out, I was like, oh, duh, you know? I was just making a silly mistake, which make, happens all the time. So you got to kind of compromise yourself to the point of being a little bit vulnerable in a math class to really get what you need. Okay, that's the end of my spiel. We'll go ahead into this last problem. I just really want you guys to all be successful. Okay, the gym teacher needs two students to be team leaders. Yay! And nobody's volunteering. It's kind of like when I ask for answers in my math classes, nobody volunteers. So we're going to go ahead and um, for a class of 12 boys and 18 girls. And so how many total students? I always add it up first. How many total? 30 students. Really good. So now we want to see, we're going to pick two people. So when I pick somebody, they can't be the person I pick both times. That doesn't make any sense. So for team A and for team B. And the gym teacher wants to know, hey, what's the probability that both of those people will be girls? So what's the probability of getting a girl, um, why don't I get Ulysses on that, a girl for my first pick? 18 over 30, really good. So there's 18 girls out of a total of 30. Now I just picked a girl, so Levi, what would have to be my second um, pick for team B? Probability of another girl. Out of how many? Yeah, good. Levi's got that. Good. So, Steph and Serenity, if you don't get that, it seems like he's catching on. So, great little collaboration there. So, if we go ahead and we've got um, girl, girl. Notice that when I picked a girl, what is it? Perfect probability. I got a girl's name because that's what I wanted. So, there's one less girl name and one less name altogether. Um, I think it's just 12 boys' names, 18 girls' names. I think they're picking two team leaders out of the total number of kids in the gym, like in this gym. So she's picking um, a team leader for, bo for both of the teams. Yeah. And then maybe from there, those team leaders are going to then pick people. You know how sometimes there's like 30 kids in a class and they pick two team leaders and then like if it was me and Alex, then I'd pick, you know what I mean? I'd pick somebody, he picks somebody. They are. Okay. Be I get what you're saying. So we are choosing a girl to be our team leader. So we're just asking what is the probability? What is it? What's the likelihood that we're going to pick a girl? So out of the 30 people, 18 of gir are girls. So whatever that reduces to. If I was a girl standing in this gym class, um, and I was just standing there. As she picks one name out of the 30, and, and I'm one of the girls, right? I have a three-fifths chance that it's going to be me, okay? And then because in perfect probability land, and that's how I say it, Richie, because I don't know how else to say it, but in perfect probability, she, she got a girl. So because she got a girl, there was one less girl name in there. And now there's one less name in there, too, because if she puts the girl's name back in, then they could be picked for both teams, and that wouldn't make any sense. Really good questions, and that is why it's awesome. Like, if he was in my group, we would have talked that through right there. Um, is it any better? A little bit, yeah. And I do that. I get so tripped up on the wording sometimes in some of these. So it's a really good one for you guys to um, see. I put it straight into my calculator and I just multiply. When we multiply fractions with numerators with numerators, denominators with denominators, hit double arrow, multiply by 100. I've just been rounding to a full percent, so that'd be 35%. 
Yeah, and always ask like Ricky, Richie did. You know, I, I know he's comfortable with me. He's not going to worry what anyone else in the class is thinking. Just always ask. Those are really good questions. I'll always keep trying. Okay, probability of a boy. So now I'm picking for team A, and I'm picking a boy out of my group of 30. Um, Steph, what would be my fraction for picking a boy? Yeah, out of how many total names? Yeah, yeah, because I haven't picked one yet, right? So I'm picking one name. Ooh, perfect probability. I just won the lottery. I got a boy. Yay. So I got a boy's name. And so then I go ahead and I pick again. And uh, let's see, Luke, what would be my fraction for picking a girl? 18 out of 29. So the 18 girls' names are still in there because I got a boy's name the first time. Does that make sense? But there's one less name because I've already picked one name out. So that name's on my desk. I know who that boy is. That's my team leader. Now I'm going to probability get a girl. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into my calculator. You have to, have to, have to reduce your fractions. So it would be 36 over 145. And then just to finish it on up, uh, Lauren, did you already get the percent? Yeah, uh, 36 over 145. I do like these calculators the more I use them. Good, so multiply by 100, and then it would round up to, yeah, beautiful, 25%. I shortened the homework from 1 through 15. All four homeworks are up here. There's three of them up here. They're all labeled nicely. So if you need to check any prior homework, you'd be crazy with no review sheet not to be checking your answers, making sure you're getting them right. There are no surprises on this quiz, and it is a group. It should be the easiest thing for me to grade. It should be hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. So make sure you work well with your people tomorrow. Even if you don't like them, who cares? Use each other for answers. You know, that's it. <laughs> I said that on the video. That was how it was in my snow. <laughs> you don't have to be best friends with the person you're sitting next to to be able to be a good resource for each other. So, Okay, questions for me? Okay, um, so far I've rounded wrong on number eight. So if you're checking with the key online, number eight, I'll make sure it's up here so you can see it. And then let me... Okay, let me send you home then. Let me just get you off the video.